Hey guys, welcome back to another video and uh, welcome back to another uh, sort of video on the farm. So uh, today I thought I'd uh, probably should be doing a video like this uh, soon because it's quite a popular video and people seem to enjoy it quite a lot. Um, so today I'm going to be doing a video on how to drive uh, this John Deere tractor. So basically I'd drive uh, a 40 or 50 series John Deere tractor uh, with the gears. Uh, in the SG2 cab because um, it's pretty much the same for uh, throughout the the 40 and 50 series bigger tractors um, so yeah we'll get started shall we uh, so we'll start off with the basics really uh, we've got the steering wheel here a uh, nice logo on there um, obviously use that to uh, um, control which ways you want to go with the wheels uh, and there's a little tab just here uh, which you pull out and then the steering wheel drops so however you want it it'll lock in place uh, so that's a low low setting you can also go as you can see to a high setting and there's, there's I think there's I believe four settings along there uh, so yeah that little tab there pull that out and the steering wheel adjusts for you uh, there's also a little if I can catch it a little tab under here uh, which you can pull uh, to your right, and you can then adjust the seat. So, me being quite sure, I like it further forward, so it's easier for me to reach the pedals. And obviously, you can go right back as well if you're tall. Um, uh, and then moving on, we'll start on the dash. So, on this side, we've got the PTA. Um, so, you basically just put the clutch in, and that engages the PTA clutch. And then, this one's quite difficult on this one, but push it all the way up, oh. easier said than done but you push it up and the PTO will engage and it will start turning back there, um, so yeah uh, and then you've got indicators here, so that's left indicator and then right indicator uh, and then you've got your temperature gauge here and fuel gauge uh, and you turn the ignition on to work that. Uh, so to simply uh, turn everything on the dash, work everything on there, uh, what you have to do, get a key, stick it in down here and then turn it to your right. And as you can see, that's the ignition, battery, temperature gauge I believe, or that could be um, coolant, I'm not sure. That's handbrake there, uh, I'm not sure what that one is as well, but that's lights. Uh, so yeah, that's flashing now, that tells you the ignition's on, so that you know, uh, and so yeah, basically you can see the fuel now, it's about half full, uh, so we'll turn that off, just to save the battery a bit, and then moving along to this side, we've got the uh, rev counter up here, so RPM, I'll just dust this off actually, it's really dusty, uh, and then you've got your miles per hour in uh, your gears there as well, so that tells you how fast you're going. Uh, you've also got hours there, uh, I was on 5,415 hours as you can see, so that's quite good hours for one of these machines. Uh, and then you've got uh, obviously five, uh, 500, uh, 1, and 2, 000, 2,500 RPM there. Uh, so yeah, when you're going along with your revs, that just tells you uh, what the revs are on. Then you've got your hazards there, I'm not sure if that works, and the horn also there, um, same with that. And then you've got lights down here, so you've got two lights. And as this uh, this tractor is four-wheel drive, we also have the on and off four-wheel drive switch uh, to turn four-wheel drive on and off. Uh, so you may have seen, if you did watch uh, uh, DJ, DJD's Farming Knives video on his 2040S, similar tractor to this, um, you would have seen that he does not have the four-wheel drive option as his tractor is not for the four-wheel drive. Uh, so, moving on down. So yeah, key there, obviously, turn right for ignition. That's it. And then you've got, oh, there, card out. Uh, you've got this, which is your starter. Uh, we'll come on to that later when I start her up. Uh, and then you've got your pull to stop here as well. So you just pull that out, turn it, and obviously as it says there, I'll uh, turn it off and then this is some electrical plug here, yeah, it might be smoke is option or something like that, but 
something like that. It's uh, quite nice. Well, obviously, this was a luxury cab of the day, so it's actually a really comfortable place to be. And uh, yeah, it's actually really nice compared to definitely the Leylands. The cabs on those is not nearly as nice as this. Much nicer place to be, this machine. Uh, so you've also got your handbrake here. It's currently on. Uh, so to turn off, you just simply push the button in and then push forward. My lad is currently getting a car on the trailer if you're wondering what that noise is. So just ignore that for a second. Um, so yeah, that's the handbrake and pull down obviously to engage. Push the button in and push forward to disengage. You might be able to just see the uh, loader pipes there as well. Uh, and here's the loader control here. Uh, so it's pretty simple, just in front of the gears, uh, just bolted on here. And you just go up, down, and tip, and just curling the bucket and the forks there on that control. It's really, really simple, really easy to use, and you get used to it quite quickly, so you don't even have to think about what you're doing, really. Uh, and then moving on, uh, we've got hand throttle here. Uh, in the 50 series, uh, you may have seen my video on one of my mates' John Deere 3050. There's a splitter here, so that uh, splits you up half a gear, or splits you down half a gear. So you've got to just sort of uh, a split there. But this just has the hand throttle knob here, uh, and same as, uh, same as uh, DJD's 2040S. So that just simply controls your revs by the hand. Uh, now, although it was not on uh, DJD's, uh, 2040s is the gears up here so on his the gears are down in the middle here and for this tractor and the 50 series there's just uh, a good bar there uh, nothing there really just uh, underneath there's the transmission and stuff like that um, so yeah gears are up here the same in the 50 series tractors as well uh, it's a really nice configuration really easy to use uh, very easy con control to do uh, so to simply work this, you put your clutch over on the right here. So you just push that all the way in like that. Make sure it's all the way in. And then you've got your high range up here, as you can see. So that's the two there. That's high range. You come out of that, you can go into low range. If it'll go in, low range uh, there. And you've also got reverse back. Um, so yeah, that's pretty simple really. Uh, and then you've got all your gears here. So this is just completely what controls all the gears you're in. And the ones in yellow tell you which ones, what gear that you're in when you're in high range. So first, if you're in low range, let's say, we'll go into low range there. And you've got first, second, third, and fourth. And then when you're in high range, like that, uh, you have fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. But we just call it first high, second high, whatever. Um, so yeah, pretty simple really, and you've got four gears in reverse as well. So yeah, that's really, really simple, really easy to use, uh, Pretty, just pretty simple really. Uh, and then you've got your links, moving back here, you've got your links up uh, just down here. So, got a bit of squeaking there. Um, that's all the way up there, just pull it back, and all the way down, it's just down to there. Uh, you've also got a little setting here. So this just controls, let's say if you're ploughing or something, you've got this little knob here and that will control, um, as you can see, that's moving up there. So that control, you can bring your links all the way back to there. And so, say you set that up, if you're ploughing or something, then you can just uh, simply pull the gears down to that level and you won't have to change at all. It's just, uh, you have to sort of get it exact. You can just come right back down to that level. That's pretty simple, really. And then just screw it back, as so, to uh, get the full full linkage there. Uh, there's two spools on this tractor as well. So if you've got a trailer or something else like that that requires high uh, power from the tractor there, um, you simply can use that. Uh, so you got uh, this one here. So I just push forward and pull back just to uh, move the uh, implement and you've also got another one here as well uh, so yeah two spools on this tractor that's nice to have and then lastly down here under was rubbish uh just move a couple of things back here uh you've got your pickup hitch so 
links all the way uh, down and then you can just uh, pull this forward to unlock it and then you can uh, hook up your trailer or whatever with the pickup hitch. Uh, so I haven't showed you the brakes yet, this is the brakes here. So you've just got, um, you can unlock them, there's a little control in the middle there. I'll actually show you that now, just uh, pull the steering wheel up. Yeah, that's all right. So just come down here and you can just pull this little flick here up and then you can have your right brake and your left brake separate or you just uh, flick that down and then you've got both brakes together. Uh, so if you're doing a tight turn or something like that you can just unlock one of the brakes. Uh, then you've also got your throttle, uh, foot throttle down here. Uh, it's not particularly good on this tractor, I've got to say, there's really not much give in it. So once you get down to here, the revs finally start and you've got really small space. So often when changing gears, I do use the hand throttle up here. Um, and it also, if you've all pushed it all the way down, it doesn't actually go to full revs, which is kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, that's just the foot throttle there underneath the brakes. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty standard in most tractors. Uh, so yeah, moving on to pretty much the last few things up here. Well, you've got, this is just our hedge cutter stand, so the hedge cutting controls just sit on there when we put that back on, but it's off at the moment, which is nice to see. I'll just show you the door as well. There's a little catch here. You just pull that back and then the door swing out and you just pull it back in and this little catch will engage down here. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty simple there. Uh, and then moving up here, we've got your uh, aircon temperature up here. Your aircon, which does actually work on this tractor, which is amazing. Well, that might be temperature, I'm not sure. They're quite uh, difficult controls. And then you've got your fans here, just up here. Uh, and I'm not actually sure what that is. As I say, I've never actually used half of this stuff. So it's quite and then you've got a little light up here as well, which I doubt works, but that's that there. Just uh, to keep the cabin nice and uh, uh, lighted if you're working up dark. Then you've got your radio here as well that you can be fitted and a simple sun guard as well. Just there. Then lastly, you've just got your, your roof up here that you can take out. I'm not going to do that because it's a pain in the ass to get it back in uh, be due to one of these bits being sheared off. So if we try and, if on my 2140, if you try and pull this out, it uh, completely comes off. So that's not too good really, but. That's how it is on this tractor. On other tractors, it's probably uh, di different and uh, it's probably quite nice to use. Uh, and then lastly, I'll just show you the side and the back windows. you just got this little control here, pull that down, and then you can simply push that out. And there's a few locking set settings in there uh, so that you can open the side windows, get a little bit of airflow into the cab, and then you just pull that back up and on. Let me try this right. Just pull that back up there, and then that's locked in. And then lastly, we'll just come down to the back window here. Uh, it's just a simple little control here that locks it. So if you don't want anyone getting in or whatever, you can just simply lock it like that. Uh, but yeah, just pull that up, and then there's a little lever here, or you just got your shocks here, and you just push it straight out, and those shocks will do the rest of the work for you. So now it's out. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll get started, give it a drive, show you how to drive it really, uh, when it's on. So yeah, we'll switch her on. Right now. So to turn it on, clutch in. Turn the key to ignition. And simply, this little tab here, as I said earlier, you just push it to the right and it'll start. And as you can see, we're now started. So to get us going, we're just gonna pull the loader up, which is back on this control here, and that'll pull ourselves that loader up and give it a bit of rev so it'll go a bit fast. Fast like that. So yeah, that's up now. And then the handbrake's off already, but if it was not off, just push it in, pull it forward, handbrake's off. And then to put it into gear, make sure your foot's on the clutch. Uh, maybe fill on brakes if you want, and we'll uh, pop her into second. Uh, sorry, high first, and then simply 
give it a little bit of revs to get going. Like that, and then slowly come out off the clutch. And we are now going. As you can see. And then give it some revs and you can get going. a quick demonstration on how to change up your gears uh, so we're in, currently in high we're in first give it a bit of revs slowly come out the clutch and off we go now I use the hand throttle here just to get us into full revs so come up the revs we're into full clutch in back in second Give her a bit of revs again. That's how you change gear, pretty simple, really. And top to third. There you go, really, really simple. And then to come down the gear. I'll do a bit of reversing so for you guys hopefully you don't know, muck it up and uh, we'll just uh, put it back into reverse here a bit of revs to get her going and back we come make sure you're looking behind just check where you're going we're getting in there obviously I'll just take the window out as well apply a bit of steering when needed so we're just going to steer up this little section here and then we'll push the clutch in as we get to go get our steering correct and we'll come back into high into first and then we can slowly come out the clutch and we'll get in this gate here as you can see it's a bit slidey as well so I'm just going to try and stay on the grass as much as possible to stop sliding yeah, there you go guys. I'll pop the GoPro on just to show a bit of filming of me uh, just sort of driving how I normally would. But that is pretty much about it with this tractor. It really is really simple. Uh, a lot simpler to drive, well I'd say, than any other new tractors. Uh, so yeah, I'll pop the GoPro on there on the head and uh, we'll give you a quick uh, little bit of video of that. It's coming to neutral as well, simply clutching on the brakes to stop and then bring the gears back to neutral and slowly out the clutch just to check you're not in gear and there you are if you want to park up handbrake on there you go you're parked not tractor's not going anywhere hopefully if, unless your uh, handbrake's buggered so i'll pop the gopro on the head and uh we'll get a bit of filming of that Go check out uh, 
DJD Farming Life's channel. Really great guy, really great channel. Um, make sure to watch his video on his 2040S, uh, how to drive, just uh, have a look at the differences. It's really interesting to see. Uh, also, maybe check out my video on the John Deere 3050. Uh, it's, I think it's called Stunning John Deere 3050 or something like that. Uh, it's a little bit of in cab footage at the end there, which you might find interesting compared to this machine. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thanks all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video uh, and I'll see you in the next one. If this uh, video does well, I'll definitely think about doing one for the Leylands. So yeah, see you later guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.